Good day gentle people, it's your favorite Mr. 42. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna take a look at two creators. Why? We must in the era Deutschland verteidigen! <clears throat> Sorry, we have to defend Germany's honor. Did Germany actually win World War II and enslave Americans and the rest of the world in a cult of scientism with a massive psyop that convinced us to worship men in white coats with their mathematical models telling us we live on a spinning ball? That is Puckett Wirt, also known as Nick. And as you can hear, he is quite a conspiracy theorist. Let's see how deep a hole he can dig for himself. Has their scientism become a global religion, with tendrils in every ministry in every developing country to eventually persuade the world's population that we should give up our freedoms and human rights without a fight, just because scientists say so? Absolutely not. Science doesn't decide anything. At most, science have an advising role. Operation Paperclip is a well-known and admitted conspiracy that American intelligence agencies under President Truman recruited 1,600 German scientists, engineers and technicians and moved them and their families to the US over a period of 12 years between 1945 and 1959, at the tail end of the Second World War. Yes, it was a secret program. No, it wasn't a conspiracy. And by the way, from 1945 to 1959 is a bit longer than 12 years. The official narrative is that the primary purpose for Operation Paperclip was for the US military to gain an advantage in the Soviet-American Cold War and the space race. And to prevent the scientists and the knowledge came into the hands of the Soviets. Many of the German recruits were former members and leaders of the Nazi party. What you say is absolutely not wrong, but maybe you should look into how voluntary that membership actually was. One of the German recruits was Kurt H. Debus, a former V2 rocket scientist who eventually became a director at NASA. Another was Werner von Braun, who became the chief architect of the Saturn V launch vehicle, which was adapted from the V2 rocket to allegedly send humans to the moon with the Apollo missions. Of course he's a moon landing denier. They told him that it happened. Which consumed roughly 4% of all federal spending in the US between 1964 and 1966, costing American taxpayers $25.4 billion over those two years alone. Yes, so? Since then, trillions of dollars have been sunk into space exploration, with much of the American public believing they were the first nation to land men on the moon. Get to the point already. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to understand that space exploration, or the illusion of it, is an incredibly lucrative industry. That was a good pun. Well done. And faking the moon landings would be an excellent way to persuade Americans to part with their hard-earned cash in the name of science in perpetuality. <sighs> you better come up with some proof, Nick. The moon landings would also appear to prove that the mathematicians were right all along about the Earth being a spinning globe. That proof has been delivered more than 2000 years ago. But if you want photographic proof, the first picture from space was taken in 1946. That is a bit before the moon landing. They would have appeared to have conquered the final frontier with their knowledge of physics and orbital mechanics, but could it be that the former Nazi party leaders and eugenicists actually ended up conquering the US with the help of double agents and spies in the intelligence agencies on both sides to win a silent war that would perpetually divert the enemy's resources into their own coffers? Well, with such an absurd claim, you understand that the burden of proof is on you, right? When we see photographs like this of Apollo mission crew in Hawaii, and then with the very same backdrop of mountains on the moon, it is clear as day that the public has been well and truly duped. Finally something real to talk about. Thank you, Nick. I can tell you, you have done absolutely no research. You just found a picture on the internet, put it in your video, and spout your nonsense as truth. The top part is not Buzz Aldrin, 
it is a picture from Apollo 17. That is more than three years after Buzz walked on the moon. The bottom part I cannot verify to be a real picture, but I have no reason to believe it is not. However, that hill has a different shape, different angles, different length. They are absolutely not the same. Try and overlay them next time, before you spout your nonsense. And that politicians, either knowingly or unknowingly, have aided and abetted a fraud that has gone on for decades. And other leaders in other countries too have seen the massive money-making potential of joining the space race to fleece their own unwitting flag-waving public. It's a big global club and we ain't in it. Ah, so you're angry because you're not smart enough to become a rocket scientist. That's the problem. And where has this unquestioning faith in science and mathematical models led us to today? We see global leaders all towing the party line and immune from investigation, while we are being told that we have to trust their scientific advisors and models to make us immune before they return the freedoms which they took away from us while they gallivant all over the world without a care that they might catch a cold or be tested and quarantined. And there is that bit of jealousy again. By the way, look up the scientific method. Everything has been observed, questioned, researched, tested, analysed and peer-reviewed. Multiple times over. The rest of us, it seems, are still prisoners of war. And that was Book at Word for today. As you have seen, all he does is taking some Wikipedia pages, puts his own label in it, mix it all together and thinks he invented the truth. Then he calls it a day. The one evidence that he brought for all this conspiracy nonsense was debunked in under a minute. Good job, Nick. Normally I would finish now, but I promise you to create this, and that's what we're gonna do. The book of conspiracy is taking us back to Germany. Before the start of World War II, German scientists developed a blind landing navigation system for aircraft. Essentially, aircraft tuned in to a certain frequency would know the location of the center of the runway by using a radio beacon as a guide. After World War II broke out, German military scientists soon realized that the same technology could enable German bombers to locate specific targets in England even in the darkest of nights. This secret system was called Knickebein. Everything in says so far is absolutely correct, and I'm gonna let him talk until he screws up. In short, the radio beam from a single transmitter would guide the German bombers on a line towards the target, but one beam could not tell the bomber when they were over the target. A second transmitter was set up so its beam crossed over the target, indicating when the airplanes should drop the bombs. British intelligence, led by R.V. Jones, slowly became aware that such bombing beams may have existed, and presented the information to Frederick Lindemann. Winston Churchill's leading science advisor. But Lindemann and others said such a targeting system would be impossible because the supposed curvature of the Earth would block the high frequency beams because VHF waves do not even allegedly bend around the curvature of the Earth. I have to interrupt here. The book of conspiracy is not lying, but he's leaving something out. Thomas Eckerley of the Marconi Company said it could be done. Eckersley's assertion was eventually demonstrated after Churchill ordered a flight to try and detect the beams. Lindemann was conceptually and mathematically right. VHF beams would require a direct line of sight with the German bombers, and England was simply too far away. What he is conveniently failing to share is the wall of the ionosphere in this. Knickerbein used the 30 to 33 MHz Lorentz signals, which bounce off while traveling. This effectively ex extends the range of these signals to hundreds of kilometers. As a bonus comes the convenience that this works best at night, when it was needed most. The rest of his video is now rendered completely useless with this information. See for yourself. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
Only under the Flat Earth model could the Knickebein system work and the globe propagandists have no counter-argument but to lie and claim that the bombers were somehow in line of sight of the Knickebein towers when that would have been mathematically impossible. German bombing beams proved there is no Earth curvature. And there you have it. The book conspiracy has been proven wrong by the existence of the ionosphere. And that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. In the description you will find links to my socials like Twitter and Discord. This has been Mr. 42, out. Don't panic.